There's a story about author David Morell, whose first novel was a bit of a success, and Hollywood came knocking. His agent sold the film rights, but made sure to retain all of the merchandising rights to the book. Morell didn't understand this. After all, what kind of merchandising could you get out of a story where an unhinged Vietnam vet takes on a small-town sheriff? His agent told him, Hollywood changes everything. You never know what they'll make out of the book. Well, the first movie based on Morell's book, First Blood, did pretty well. But it was the sequel that turned it into one of the monster franchises of the 1980s. Rambo First Blood Part 2 spun off into toys, cartoons, video games. And that's what this game is, an adaptation of First Blood Part 2. The story of the game is based on some racist conspiracy theories that Vietnam was continuing to hold American soldiers long after the end of the Vietnam War. In the game, Rambo heads off to Vietnam to find POWs, gets betrayed for political reasons, and then goes on to win the Vietnam War for the US. In Rambo, that makes it an action-adventure game with a very slight RPG element. While Rambo is divided up in segments that you could think of as stages, each area consists of a lot of interconnected screens that you have to travel through. And eventually you'll reach a choke point where you can't go backwards. For example, you start out on the military base, and you can walk around and talk to everyone, get details of your mission. You have to get outfitted with your equipment from the army, which is a whopping 20 knives. And then you're flown into the jungle with instructions to look for a contact. So you explore a bit, eventually meet her, and she has you go to a boat. And that boat takes you to a whole new region. In that region, you'll find a side quest that's very helpful to do, and eventually you'll find a prison camp. You can't leave that prison camp until you rescue someone, so that's another distinct chunk of the game. A lot of these regions loop, where if you keep going in one direction, you'll eventually get back to where you started. There are also these spots marked N and S. They show you where you can press up to go to another screen. I know they're supposed to mean north and south, but they really don't line up with any kind of geography. Rambo's primary weapon is his knife. It's pretty good at taking out just about anything. And it's what levels up. As you kill enemies, you'll get points that go into anger. And when you get enough, your knife attack increases in power. You can hit select to switch to other weapons. The throwing knives travel a short distance and are weaker than even your basic knife. The bow isn't much stronger, but travels a further distance. And then there are grenades, which do a lot of damage and travel in an arc. I found those to be very useful for taking out this spider boss. As you explore, you'll also get other items from people. For example, when you first enter these caves, you won't be able to see anything. But there's a guy nearby who will give you a lamp once you agree to help rescue a child from those caves. Also in your status bar is medicine, and that will heal 100 of Rambo's hit points. Early in the game, I'd advise avoiding using it. When you die, you continue from the last conversation you've had. Often that's recent enough that you don't mind taking the death rather than spending the rare medicine. The action in Rambo is not quite right. The hitboxes for both your attacks and for enemies just doesn't feel right. It's like there's a delay on your attacks, and the hitbox lasts a little bit too long. And when you attack, your hitbox grows, so you'll be hit by bullets that are passing over your head if you attack. And attacks passing just below your feet can also hit you. There's also a delay when you reach zero hit points. It takes a couple extra seconds for Rambo to die. That delay in the attack makes getting the timing to hit enemies down kind of tricky. Still, it's not too difficult as long as you're fighting the wildlife of Vietnam. Once you reach the prison camp, things get much harder. These soldiers will jump kick as they approach you, for example, and while you can hit them before they jump kick, the timing is incredibly tight. That weird delay in the attack occurs with these club guys, too. Most annoyingly, while you're crossing a bridge, if you get hit, you fall off. And that sends you back several screens. The best advice I can give 
is to switch to throwing knives here. You should have a huge stockpile of them by the time you reach the prison camp, and you can slowly whittle down the unarmed soldiers. One useful thing to be aware of is that by pressing start during a conversation, you get a password to let you continue from right there. This is the first Famicom game we've seen from Pack-In Video. They specialize almost exclusively in movie and TV licenses. And as you might expect from a company like that, their games tend to not be very high quality. As for Rambo, he'll get a lot more video games, but no more on the Famicom. Somehow Rambo 3 missed the platform. The best thing I can say about Famicom Rambo is it's not as bad as it could have been. It's an adequate, middle-of-the-road Famicom action-adventure game. I like how it's a little bit more streamlined and easy to navigate due to how the areas are sectioned off, but the combat isn't much fun thanks to how the controls feel. Playing a couple minutes of the US version, I think that the combat was improved before that release. So this seems to be a case where the US version's better.